And our second uh, scripture reading for tonight is found in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 16, and we're looking at verses 16 through 34. Paul and Silas in prison. One day as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul, while she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that her, their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged him into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disrupting our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all of the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell up down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. There's a number of things going on here. First of all, this is immediately after um, the verses we talked about last week with Lydia. And Paul apparently is going back to that same place of prayer where he met Lydia and she converted and was baptized. And here he meets a, a, a different a woman of a different sort, a woman of a different ranking. Lydia was well to do, and here we have a slave girl. And it says here that she had a spirit of divination. And it, it, another way to translate is that she had a spirit of a python. She was a pythoness, which meant she was aligned with, with the, uh, the god Apollo. So the spirit that she had within her was a spirit from Apollo, given by Apollo, is what they believed anyway. And so this is a Greek god, Apollo. Um, so what we've got going on here is we've got a, an interesting scenario. And later on, it talks about that the owners, their primary means or reason, rather, for, for having him or Paul and Silas arrested and imprisoned is that they're upset because they've lost money, right? It's economics. All of a sudden, she has lost this spirit and now she can't foretell fortunes, and so they have lost some revenue, and they're upset. So well, they, what do they go, though? They can't go to the authorities and complain, well, these guys cost us a bunch of money. No, they go and say that they're, they're promoting gods and customs that it's unlawful for them to adopt as Romans, which is really true, because what you've got going on here is you have this girl following Paul around that people believe to be embodied with the spirit that prophesies on behalf of Apollo. And Paul has, cast, Paul has cast this spirit out. So in the name of Jesus Christ, which means that Jesus is superior to Apollo. And remember what the spirit given by Apollo was proclaiming as this woman followed them around is that these men represent what? The most High God. Now this is something, that if you listen to the psalm reading, it was talking about the hierarchy of gods. This is something we're not, we don't believe in other gods as Christians. 
But you've got to remember, in this era, this element, they believed in a multitude of gods. They believed in a mul multiple levels of gods. And they, you know, if you saw the movie, The Mummy, remember, if you saw that, in there, there was one of the fellows that was being confronted by the mummy, and he was going through a bunch of necklaces. He had different symbols of different religions and different gods. And many times in those days, people would have prayed, you know, you need to pray to this God, you need to pray to that God. You, just to be safe, I'll pray to this God too. I don't really believe in that God, but I'll pray to him anyway, and I'll lift him up anyway, or her up, or goddess, um, because that was the way they believed. And that's one of the reasons why they're, I'll, I'll just take an aside. Um, recently, I saw someone talking about that, you know, if I believe in, in Jesus and I'm, and I'm wrong, what have I lost when I get to, to heaven? Whereas if you don't believe in Jesus, what have you lost when you get to heaven? I don't like that. I don't like that idea. I don't like that concept. That's not showing faith in Jesus. You're, you're basically doing what Jim Bruce always used to talk about, when we're doing baptisms, we're not selling fire insurance. Jesus is not fire insurance. I, I mean, it's, he's, he has guaranteed you against that, but you don't just say, well, I'm going to buy this policy. I don't really think that I'm going to need it because I'm not going to have a fire. Um, I'm going to be, you know, but I need to buy the insurance. Jesus is not just, okay, I'm going to hedge my bets. You need to have faith and belief, actual belief in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So that's an aside here. So what's going on is he's they're proclaiming the spirit was proclaiming that Jesus is the most high God. Well, if Jesus is the most high God, who's not? Caesar, the Son of God. In the this time where you had the worship of the emperor uh, as a son of God, that the, that was a very real thing in the Roman Empire. So you've got this problem that they're going around telling Romans, well, Caesar's not really the most high God of all. It's Jesus. So this is a problem for them. And so therefore, this is a pagan community, like we talked about last time. Why is Paul take, going down to the river? Because there's not a synagogue. There's not very many Jewish people there. And Judaism is, is, is worried about, and this is a new different type of Judaism for crying out loud. This is a different, a different thing that's going on here. And so they're, they're, they order them to be beaten and thrown into prison, which the jailer dutifully does. And we don't know whether the jailer was involved in the beating or not, but it wouldn't have been unlikely that he was. At least he would have been there and witnessed it and certainly not, pro, pro, you know, protested that they were being beaten and mal misused and, and maltreated. Uh, and then he locks them up and continues the maltreatment. So, when the earthquake comes, when Paul and Silas are praying and singing, and the earthquake comes and suddenly the doors spring open and the chains fall away, and of course, in any good action movie that you would see, if that were to happen, what would happen? The prisoners would run away. They'd jump on horses or what have you, and they'd, and they'd be gone into the night, and, and they would have gotten away scot-free and laughing all the way. But that's not what happens here. This is the twist of, of why Jesus and the followers of Jesus are so different. Paul doesn't leave. Silas doesn't leave. He remains. And he uses this as a way to witness to the jailer. This man that just mistreated them and locked them up, he has shown them, they have shown him the love that they worried about his life because they would have known that had they left, he would be killed because this is how harsh justice is in this environment. You failed at your job, you're dead. Why is he going to kill himself? Because he might be killed more brutally and beaten till he was dead for having had dereliction of duty. So sometimes they say he's threatened to kill himself. No, the jailer didn't threaten to kill himself. He just hadn't quite gotten up the nerve yet to slice his slit his own throat with his sword before Paul stopped him. But the, mayor, the miracle of miracles is, is that then the jailer has a change and he sees this. What kind of God is this that these men didn't run away? What kind of, 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 of a faith is this? What, what is with these guys? 
So he goes and says, what do I do to be saved? Now we don't know, in our, in our definition, we look at that as he's asking, what does he have to do to be saved? You know, the salvation of Christ. But he may be saying, what am I going to do to be saved? They're, nonetheless, they're going to be very upset when they find out that the door is all opened up and all of this, and what, what, what do I have to do here? And uh, there's going to be trouble coming, most likely, for this jailer. And Paul tells him to believe in Christ because as we talked on Sunday, the peace of Christ means that no matter what's going on, no matter what the turmoil, no matter what the tragedies you endure, you can have that peace of Christ. And so this is what, G, or what Paul professes to him. And this is what he endure, embraces as this jailer does. And he, because he's embraced it, therefore his entire family comes into the fold. And now you have this jailer, this reversal of fates, the, this man that was, that was abusing Paul and Silas and locking them up in the darkest part of the, of the jail now has taken them home and fed them. I mean, it's a beautiful story of, of redemption, salvation, and reversal. And this is the things that, that, that we can do through the power of, of Jesus and the love of Christ and witnessing in whatever means we need to do. This was the right way for Paul to witness to this jail. And he knew it somehow, perhaps by the Spirit. But it shows the power and the fact that Jesus, or that Jesus is the Most High God. And that's the whole thing with this Pythoness, this, this girl back there, who disappears from the story. We don't know whatever happened to her. She would have had no value or no extra value to her, her owners. So we, we, we worry about her, actually, if we look back and say, what, what, what was her fate? We don't know. It would be nice if the scripture told us. So, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for the, for the message of Paul and Silas and their witness to the jailer and, and the, the, the message and the story of, of, of that Jesus truly is the supreme um, revelation of God and it, that we need to embrace that in our hearts, that we need to live somehow in whatever fashion the way that Paul and Silas have lived out their faith and their witness to this, this jailer and to this community in Philippi. Pray this in your love and glory.